Named Zach for Jeff. I've been oh, waiting for a very long time for this joke, but that's I feel like we should have set that up better. Well, that's our comedy style. Badly. Thank you for <laughs> the show. Yay! Yay! So tell us okay. a little bit about A, why you're here. Okay. And B, how you got here in the world of writing, not necessarily to Toronto. Okay. We assume I was that like, was a bus. I was like, well, it's actually a train. Well, it's so it pretty fast. Oh, wow. I know. God. I'm fancy. You like are that. fancy. Um, I am a, a woman and I'm a writer and a critic. And um, I, uh, I caught the train to Toronto, and I'm covering the festival for people, and uh, I, that's it. That's not very exciting. Well, who are you covering it for? I am, <laughs> that's a good question. I, <laughs> I am covering it for Filmmaker Magazine and Huffington oh. Post. Awesome. So, have you always been a writer, or is this, like, from a path that you took? get somewhere else or with another direction. Okay, so I started going to law school and I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a human rights lawyer and that was like the thing that I wanted to do and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be so good at this and then like I hated law school and so I dropped out. And then writing was the only thing that was very, that came very organically to me. It was the only thing that made sense to me. So I was like, you know what, maybe I should just be a writer. And so, yeah, so now I'm here and, and it doesn't mean that it's easy because it's not, but yeah. I'm here. So what do you want to write? What is your goal? To write. Okay, so I like so I mainly just focus on criticism right now. And I love doing it. You know, Susan Sontag is mm -hmm. one of my favorite writers and she started off as a critic. And and sort of was a critic throughout her life. Um, and sort of I think in terms of being a woman of color, culture right now and popular culture and definitely the angle that I take personally with um, with like my podcast even. Um, I do focus more about, on women and women of color, and that I think it's a really exciting time to be alive for that reason, because I think all of a sudden we're kind of tapped in to that, oh, yeah. and you know, it's becoming something that we're aware of. And so that's, that's been really nice, but I do have a book that I'm trying to get published, and I'm like in the really final stages of, of, of like, not like booking a publishing deal, but like in the final stages of re-editing it, and I really feel good about it, so. What is the book? Um, it, can you say anything? Can you <laughs> I like that you I didn't. Can. By the way, this light is like just the timer. I realize it is all lit up. People are going to be like, what's that on her lap? It's a timer. It's not her It's a flashing vagina. <laughs> I have a special one. It it's is like not, Iron Man. It's, it's like, not. it's the exact same thing, because they're same hard. Thing. The yeah, heart, yeah, yeah. I don't know, too or much like happy. AI? No, 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 it's a different thing. Wherever right, Haley Joel Osment is, is uh, well, he's invited to this podcast too. Anywho, <laughs> tell us about your book. If you okay, can. I yeah. can. Okay. I can tell you. It's actually, it's about a girl who is brutally raped and then uh, basically learns to transcend this very destructive thing that has happened to her and, and become herself, essentially. And the reason I wrote it, just quickly, is because, um, like, as when I was practicing, like, when I was studying law, I like started reading a lot of cases, and it was just like just so tragic to see that like so many women, um, their whole lives are just like end at this point when they are, you know, sexually abused or whatever, and, and their idea and the way they define themselves is just like completely obliterated, and, and they have nothing really. So, like when you started your book, like it's fiction, I'm assuming. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, I mean, criticizing the way that like rape culture because I mean I'm assuming that's what it is too the way it's handled in our society yeah, yeah, yeah. and then your and then your criticisms on race relations and also the way women are looked at in society mm -hmm. I'm was there a lot of crossover there oh, yeah. too yeah 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 of course like they go hand in hand and like you know a lot of our just interactions with uh, women in general and like like the tendency that we have as a culture to sort of always put the blame on a woman 
like always contributes to the culture that we live in. It is, you know, everybody unfortunately does time to time that I know that might, might consider themselves feminists or whatever, say something that's extraordinarily sexist. And like, you know, like, I mean, with doing research, you, fo you quickly find that like the first question that like women are asked after they've been raped is like, were you asking for it? Or what were you wearing? You yeah, know? which is insane. And, mm -hmm. and, and the insinuation is always that, yeah, it's, if the onus is put on the on the woman and so yeah with with uh with race i mean it's just it's it's just again like just we just don't know how to interact because it is something that we still don't understand completely so that's that's exciting and it deserves to be published we need more things yes. like this yeah, yeah, yeah especially because yeah. it creates such an important dialogue yeah and i think yeah. that's it's sort of it's not even like a i want to get published it's more just like i really believe in this story and that's why i started writing it Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. God, young young women are so lucky to live in a time where women are <laughs> kicking ass and taking names yeah, and seriously. talking about rape culture and these things, and it's people like you that make it amazing for them to grow up in this environment. Yay! So, yes! It's amazing! And we need more of it. Yeah. So yes. take her as an example and start getting your own shit out there. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Now let's talk about your podcast. Oh, yeah. I interrupted you before you tried asking about it. Twice. Oh, no, uh, I think... Like, we just interrupt each other because we're like sisters. Or we're like, just like sisters. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so tell us about your podcast. Okay, so I have a podcast with Ziba, who you are going to interview after this. What? what? Yes. Oh my I don't spoiler know. alert. Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Uh, Christopher. Um, and we started it because actually Lena Dunham, uh, with girls and everything, when we were watching it, definitely we had the perspective that, like, I mean, at the time I was a 20 something writer living in. You know, and it didn't really, really, I didn't relate to it at all. We both have the same perspectives, and I've known Ziva for a really long time, and, like, we're besties, huh? Yay! And so we decided to do a podcast. And that's how Two Brown Girls came about. And it's just, it's been doing really well, which is really exciting. And uh, it's so we talk about women of color, um, or people of color from the perspective of women of color, of two women of color, and uh, we sort of dissect film, television, popular culture, and then, like, generally, like, 30 minutes of it is me probably talking about some hot guy that I think is really cute. <laughs> generally, Michael Fassbender, but... All right. Or, like, you know... One. Yeah, right? Oh, I've got stories for you. Oh. Hey, now, I'd like also... The, include me in these stories! <laughs> but I want to know. She looked at me when she was... That's really important, though. Yeah, it's great. It's really... I mean, I think one of the things for me, one of the most exciting and, like, rewarding things about doing this has been like getting these emails or, or like whatever from people who listen to us and just being like this is so integral like or, or like I thank you for doing this like I respond to this or like you know telling the, us their own stories of like their struggles with like coming to terms with their own identity and race and whatever and, and it's just like it's tragic in a way because it's so there's such a large number of people that feel this way but it's exciting that we're contributing to something that feels necessary. It is necessary. For sure necessary. In our school systems, they never taught us anything about, like, sexism, feminism, like, even race relations, like, nothing. And then, like, you want to get in on this discourse, but then you're almost afraid to because you don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah. So, the cool thing about your guys' podcast is that, like, there's this introduction to it where you're, like, really helping to shed some light on what we need to pay attention to. Right. Yeah. And I think that, like, if there were more vehicles like that, they'd probably avoid a lot of, like, hurt and ignorance, especially in our own... Right, and it's sad to see like some like like feminists still kind of being like ah, but like, do you really like is this really important? And like you know, I, I've I've even been asked by like men that I you know know who are like, do you really think your podcast is doing anything? Yeah, and it's really it's always really interesting. It's more just like for like the sort of all of the other people who have nobody to sort of represent or not even represent, but to like to to talk to in a way. Like, I feel like, in a, in a way, I feel like I'm, I mean, I don't know if this is lofty, but, like, you know, helping people to just sort of maybe come to terms with their identity, because that was a struggle for me, like, being a woman of color, like, 
not having anyone that looks like you or represents you is really hard for you to then like accept yourself. Yeah, it's weird when people ask, "Do you think you're helping anyone?" Because it's not about numbers. Like even if you, even if no one listens, you're at least educating yourself right. and no, exactly. uh, becoming a better person. Exactly. Know? I feel like we should move on to rapid. Fire I think it's questions. time for rapid fire. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you ever been critiqued on your critiques? No, never a critique, but sort of just like. People, again, like, assuming that they know best. Like, I don't really think that what you're saying is relevant. <laughs> yeah. Favorite film you've seen at TIFF so far? I'm gonna go with 12 Years of Slave and call it a day. Excellent. Yeah. What Here. is your favorite thing about uh, working in Canada? The, like, standard of living is so high compared to New York. And, like, just, like, healthcare. I mean, duh, just healthcare. Yeah. Favorite movie of all time? You know, for a very long time, it was Eternal Sunshine of Spock's Mind. But I don't know anymore. Uh, ooh... Um, I can't, uh, I can't say. Uh, one more before we go. Uh, who inspires you? Okay. Firstly, David Frost Wallace, probably, because he's a genius and he's, like, my role model in life. But, like, the, 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 the career that I want to emulate the most is probably Zadie Smith, and I think that, as a woman of color, it's quite apt that she's, she's a huge hero of mine, so. Yeah! Happy Yay! birthday! Yay! Happy birthday? Well, I don't know. Happy it's birthday! Nice Somebody's birthday's out there, probably. Yeah. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Virgo! I also cut off all my hair. You look great! Thanks! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bass, but no, Michael Bass, Emma, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show a scene from Shane right now. Uh. <laughs>